Right now, it is time to bring in Dr. Judy Workman. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet, serotoninpowerdiet.com. Also, uh, Simon loses his tummy, and she joins us uh, vacation after vacation. Good morning, Dr. Workman. Hi. That's really unfair. This is the least vacation. I, I missed you guys. No, and we so missed you, you too. The bigger the bigger problem is because you are so prolific a right tricks. Um, it, you know, the, the, there are, you've, you've now got 27,000 different things to talk about. Well, it's your choice. I mean, I can talk about the scenery in Alaska. And most must say that people, if you can, go and visit that incredible state. But I won't waste your time because people can see it for themselves. And I hope you both do. But, Joy, uh, uh, Jill, it's your choice. Uh, well, like so, shall we do gender differences? Pardon? Shall oh, we do? Yes. You, your, I, this is your most recent. Yes. I, uh, unless you want to do I, jet I like, lag, so it's your. It's actually your call. Okay, I would like to talk about this, and uh, this is uh, a topic that has interested me for years. The, the topic really is: Why is it that women more than men are likely to want to eat something usually sweet, maybe starchy and salty like potato chips, but usually sweet like cookies or cake or ice cream when they get upset and and the event that upsets them is frustrating they really can't do very much about it they simply have to tolerate it you know it could be a fight with their teenage kid or they could, or it could be uh, a problem at work with uh, their coworker or their boss or you know one of any one of a number of things that causes us to feel stress well women are more likely to want to eat a carbohydrate food than men men you know, in the movies or the television or what have you, you rarely see two men who have, or two, two or three men who have just emerged from some kind of stressful situation, you know, slap each other on the back and say, hey, let's go off to Dunkin' Donuts to get a donut, or let's go to, you know, at the local ice cream place and get an ice cream cone. You, we really see them, you never see them doing that. You know, if they do anything, they're going to go off and get a drink. You're going to see them in the bar, you're going to see them in the cocktail lounge. You're going to see them sitting in somebody's office, and the person pulls out a bottle, a bottle of a whiskey behind, you know, his desk. Whereas a, with a woman, and I don't think it's simply cultural, um, they might say, well, gee, let's get a cup of coffee and something to eat. Or, you know, would you like some cake? Women are much more likely to eat something. Men are more likely to drink. Again, you can argue about the cultural norms, but I really think this is what happens. And I think the reason is that I... We're eating in order to feel better. I mean, we're clearly not eating simply to get more calories in our body. And we do feel better, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. You know, if we ate cauliflower every time our washing machine overflowed or our kid came home with a bad mark, you know, in in school, you know, and, and the cauliflower helped, that's what we would eat. But the point is we don't. We tend to eat sweet and starchy foods. And the reason for this is that when you eat these foods, it could be, again, uh, a chocolate chip cookie or a piece of bread, your brain is going to make more serotonin, this calming chemical that is not going to take away the source of the stress, but may make it easier for you to cope with it. And I think the most extreme example of this is when women have premenstrual syndrome and they are experiencing a whole lot of unhappy be- unhappy moods, you know, from anger to confusion. Um, they tend to want to eat carbohydrates, not cauliflower. Okay. But, again, why is it that women more than men have this tendency? And this goes back to studies that started in the, really the 1990s but have been continued even up to this time. And, and these studies are showing that men have much more serotonin normally in their brains than women. And the, and the studies have shown this in, in a variety of ways, mainly by uh, seeing how quickly it takes a man's brain or a woman's brain to replenish their store of serotonin when it's depleted in an experimental way. And, and men very quickly restore their serotonin, and they have more of it. Their serotonin is more active in general than that of a woman. Than that of a woman. So it could be that when stress occurs, the men have enough serotonin to perhaps deal with it, you know, in comparison to a woman who does feel the emotional impact. Of, of a stressful situation. And we, we, as women, may have learned at some time in our early life that when we eat carbohydrates, we feel better. We certainly don't know it's because we're making more serotonin. But we've learned that when we eat a cracker, a cookie, a piece of 
bread, you know, uh, some cereal, we are going to feel better, and we need to feel better. And, and we're feeling better because we make more serotonin because we don't have enough, and that's why we tend to do that kind of eating. And the point of all this is that I think when people, you know, when people suggest diet plans and, uh, you know, ways, best ways of, of preventing emotional overeating, which is a big problem when you're trying to lose weight or prevent yourself from gaining weight, nobody talks about this. Nobody says, well, gee, maybe a keto diet that eliminates carbohydrates is fine for you guys because you have enough serotonin, and so if something happens, you don't really need to make it right away, whereas women who go on this diet are not going to be able to make serotonin because you're not allowed to eat carbohydrates, and that's the only way you can make serotonin. Nobody ever talks about the fact that there really are these brain-based gender differences or gender-based brain differences, Um, and I think it's something that people should start thinking about, especially before they give out advice without any scientific basis for it, like go on a keto diet, stop eating carbohydrates, you lose weight. That's fine for a guy. It's not good for a woman unless the woman plans to live a totally stress-free life, and that's certainly not going to happen on this planet. Right. And then, of course, you've got the, um, I mean, not, not, not only not the stress-free, but you've got this, this, sorry, this is my opinion, ridiculous attention to... Um, uh, gender bias. Uh, I'm, not against gen- I'm, I'm not against gender. I'm not against. I mean, I. I, I, I know. People I don't need to take this the wrong way, but there, there actually are physiological differences between the male and the female of the species, and uh, it would be helpful if anyone under the age of, or as <laughs> the late lamented <laughs> Joseph Zappi yeah. used to say, anyone over three feet tall um, knew that. Because you make different choices and do different things based on that, I'm going to say this physiology, and uh, well, it is. yeah, right. So this is a perfectly reasonable thing to consider and to let your mind go with. Really, okay. So probably has to. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but I think you're probably onto something when you talk about the reproductive cycle. You know, and that's the, pretty much the first biggest difference between the male and female of the species. Exactly. And when, you know, and, and people, women are always being teased or they're embarrassed about the fact they get premenstrual syndrome when their hormones shift. They enter the menstrual cycle. Well, you're not going to be able to do anything about it unless you change your sexual identity. And it happens. And when it happens, you're going to... We, People know this already. We've actually done studies on this. The reason it happens is that serotonin levels or activity shift downwardly, and you tend to experience all the sort of the negative moods that happens when you don't have enough serotonin. And that's why women crave carbohydrates, in particular chocolate, because it tastes good, but carbohydrates in general. Okay, guys don't do this. And there's no reason to be embarrassed about the fact that you are self-medicating by eating a carbohydrate in order to feel better. You don't have to eat chocolate. You can eat something like you know, whole wheat toast. It doesn't have to be a tasty carbohydrate. It simply has to be a sweet or starchy carbohydrate. And then we don't have to make a big political thing about it. It's just the way it is. And unless we have brain transplants, you're not going to be able to change it. And I think we should simply embrace it and figure out ways of dealing with it without gaining weight. Again, you don't have to eat a, a carbohydrate that has 50% fat in it, like a chocolate chip cookie. You can eat a carbohydrate that has no fat in it, like a, a, a cup of steamed rice. But it's not something that we should we can wish away or say, well, follow this male-centered diet, like the keto diet, because it works for me, says the male, who doesn't feel the necessity to eat carbohydrates when he's stressed. And doesn't and do, yeah, and, and doesn't have that 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 sort of cycle that 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 role. I'm not talking about um, menstrual at this point. I'm just like mood mood mood. Things, mood switches, mood changes. Um, a question: What is a perfectly acceptable sweet carbohydrate that you should just be able to, if you were just allow yourself? Like, can you have a handful of M and M's? I don't know. How about well, no, because that wouldn't have enough carbohydrates. But you'd have a graham, crack, graham crackers or vanilla wafers or um, you know. The, the funny thing is, if if you're looking for, I'm trying to suggest fat-free carbohydrates because they're digested faster, and what you want is fast relief.
wait. You don't want to wait an hour and a half for that, you know, late fat laden ice, uh, ice cream to be processed through your intestinal tract. So even something as disgustingly sweet as marshmallow fluff would help, or the the kind of uh, and it, we so basically a spoonful it. of marshmallow fluff if you eat. Like, some people are sweet, some people are salt, but like something yes, like yes. And if you but but I I but I what I would suggest if you because you don't really need something intensely sweet. I think sweetened breakfast cereal is good. Again, like oat squares, which are just mildly, mildly sweet. Or if you really want something sweet and you just reserve it for times of stress, something as really um, ex- extremely intensely sweet, like Fruit Loops, or you know any of those breakfast cereals that we're told never to feed our children. If you have maybe a cup, of, a half a cup of them, that in in fifteen minutes you're going to be feeling better. It's true, but it has to be. Pre-measured. It cannot be. Oh, I'll keep sticking my hand. Right, in and you're eating it, eating it until, until I feel, I feel it. better. Right. Okay. Makes perfect yeah, sense. And it's like, anyway, so we hope you have a stress-free weekend. And did you have Fruit Loops in Alaska? Oh, it was wonderful. I, I, I again, what we learned about first of all, the people are lovely, wonderful, and the the state, with the sliver, the tiny sliver of the state that we saw was so majestic in its, its beauty that, um, again, I, I would recommend anybody who would make the trip there to do so. It's just, we never experienced really su- such a beautiful landscape as we did when we went there. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Judy Wortman, Food okay. for Mood and yes, Travelog. And I just want to add um, that they've been everywhere, so that's not, this, this, this isn't in a vacuum.